Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do another different kind of video, which is roll guides. Today we're gonna focus on inverted wing back. So we're gonna start off by reading it from the descriptions given by the game. The inverted wing back will function defensively much like a standard full back or wing back. However, while a normal wing back will offer whip to attack the inverted wing back when he has a player ahead of him and where there are fewer than two defensive midfielders will attempt to drift inside and create space for players around him. If there is no teammate ahead of him on his side of the pitch, then the inverted wing back will look to support attacks in a more traditional manner when there is he will look to affect play in the middle of the pitch as much as possible. So on defend, the inverted wing back will hold his position and sit deeper while fulfilling his defensive responsibility either out wide or further inside the pitch depending on the system around him. While on support, the inverted wing back will look to cut inside with the ball and either drift inside from the flank or move into a more central position to support the play depending on the system around him. With an attack duty, the inverted wing back aims to cut inside and eventually support the attack by drifting inside from the flank or from a more central position depending on the system around him. That's a bit confusing, I know. I'm gonna tr try to explain it in my own ways. So when inverted wing back has players on in front of him, like here, Baines have Dinier in front of him as the winger, so Dinier's gonna cover the whip. What what Baines will do is he will come inside here and be like a DM when we are in possession, obviously when we are out of position we're gonna go back to this 442 formation. But when we are in possession, we will kinda like go into this kind of position as the inverted wing back will cut inside and become like defensive midfielder while the wingers provide the whip. But the description did mention when there is no one providing the whip, assuming we're gonna play something like this with a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond formation, the inverted wing back will act as a normal traditional wing backs which will bomb down the wing. But that is only the case when there is no one providing whip, they will become the one that provide the whip. Also another thing you need to pay attention to is if you have more than two DMs assuming we're playing something like this. Let me take a second and sort it out properly. Uh, come on, go on, son. Okay, we've got two DM, so the inverted wing back will also not coming in because it's already occupied basically. There's no point, they come inside here and crowded the central area. They will still try to do something like this when we are on the possession because this two DM area is already occupied. There is no point to crowd the area. So we're gonna look at the instructions for inverted wing back on defense first. So we're gonna look at the instructions for inverted wing back first on defense. They're gonna have the instructions of dribble last, can side ball, cross left of turn, hold position and sit narrower. How about on support? On support the whole position instructions will be removed. How about on attack? When attack does way more instructions, dribble more. Can't serve ball, take more risk, cross left of turn, get further forward, sit narrow, roam from position. So here we can look at Leighton Baines as highlighted as the inverted wing back on support. In my opinion, the most important stats for this role is the decision. They need to know when they need to drift inside and become a DM or they need to know when they need to go outside and provide the width for the team because there is also occasion when the wingers comes slightly inside a little bit so the fullbacks need to provide the width then that time the decision is the most important thing and he needs to have great decisions making to make the right decisions at the time also acceleration and pace even though they will not always bomb down the wings like the normal wing backs but they still need the pace because they still gonna cover lots of grounds by going inside and outside of the pitch whether they want to cut inside or go overlapping that is of course requires a lot of pace. At the same time, they also need stamina and work rate to do that, like going inside outside multiple times. I think that's the few key stats for me to play as an inverter winger. Melton Bain scored 15 decision, not the greatest acceleration and pace, but he's got okay stamina and okay work rate. How about City Bay or other inverter wing back we're gonna play today? He's quicker and better stamina and work rate so 
we gonna test out the very plain tactic indeed we have no instruction at all whatsoever this is just a random tactic i put up to play against the avatar under 23 just to show you guys what's gonna happen when we put different instructions and player roles for inverter wingbacks and how the formation affects inverter wingbacks with their doings on the pitch we're gonna start off with this formation first as Bane's gonna play as the left inverter wingback while CDB playing as the right inverter wingback so as you can see here at the start of the game when we are in possession we, we sort of playing as two center back Michael Keane and Hoygate and then you see Baines and CDB just in front of the center backs becoming the DM while our two central midfields because they are not DMs uh, Sigurdsson on the left and also Andre Gomez push up a little forming like a 2-2-4-2 two, 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 if you can see it so now uh, when we are out of possession as we just lost the ball to Everton under 23 you can see Baines and CDB is going backwards now forming back the back 4 becoming the 4-4-2 we want them to play so basically this starting formation is the tactic you are when you are out of possession the roles given are the formation you are in when you are out of possession if that makes sense to you I forget to mention that Baines is currently on defend inverter wing back while CD base is on support so you will expect Baines to sit slightly deeper while CD base slightly push up a little bit when we are on the ball but we are on defending now I'm gonna put the instructions passing directness to shorter and then player on defense distribute to full backs distribute quickly so we can keep the ball more to show you guys what happening so we pause it right there as we are trying to attack so Baines is on the center circle because he's on inverter winger on defense so he's acting like a DM while where's CD base? CD base is outside the penalty area try to get into goal scoring chances maybe that's the difference between the defense and support what we're gonna change now is make Baines become support and CD Bay on attack and see the difference between it so we're gonna pause it right there as you can see here again Andre Gomez even becoming like a right back while CDB comes inside and become like a center midfield so you kind of understand now what inverter wingback is gonna do when we are in possession uh, we are one year but that doesn't matter so we just conceded but we're gonna pause it that uh, this is the thing I want to show you guys so when we're playing inverter wingback sometimes when we kick off we're gonna have kind of something like this as you can see here Baines is in the middle of the circle while CDB is also in the middle of the circle this is how they are gonna start straight away as a DM straight away so we just score but what I want you guys to see is currently the inverted wing back on the left which is Bane is on support he's outside the penalty area which is also what happened to CDB earlier when he's on support duty but look at CDB since he's on inverted wing back on attack he's actually getting into the box to try to get into goal scoring position as well so you really want to consider properly which kind of roles you want to use with inverted wing backs as on defense they might be around the central circle while on support they might be outside the penalty area while on attack you might see some runs like this into the box we're now going to make some sub and change the formation to 41212 the diamond formation i we talked about earlier so yeah it doesn't matter so we're gonna leave it as it is and see what's gonna happen to the inverted wing back. Okay, so we are on the ball now with Gilfi Sigerson as we do not have wingers now. Try to notice what happens. Bane's actually gone wider now, so is CD Bay. Remember earlier when we have wingers, what happens to this uh, inverted wing back? They're gonna be in the position of Gomez and also Tom Davis, kind of like middle of the pitch. But now since we do not have wingers, they turn back into like a more normal wing backs providing the width because no one's providing it they have to to provide balance for the team i want you guys to look at this highlight here with inverted wing back baines got the ball here this is what normal wing backs will not do because inverted wing back will turn your wing backs into like a dm uh, central midfield they're gonna do sometimes long passes which won't usually happen on left backs or right backs as here Baines play a long ball over the top down to Nias although it didn't reach Nias but still you get my you get my understanding 
where Bates tried to play a long ball to Nias over the top. As you can see here, another example of CD Bay, the inverted wingback now becoming the normal wingbacks, providing the width for Everton as we don't have anyone else at this position now. Baines is also doing the same. We're gonna try this formation now with two DMs and also two wingers and see what the inverted wingback is gonna do. So we're gonna post it right there. As you can see here, when we're having two defensive midfielder, actually Leighton Baines is no longer becoming, trying to become like a defensive midfielder because like I mentioned earlier, the space is already occupied. So there's no point of him trying to do something in the middle to overcrowd the middle area. So he's gonna turn back more like a fullback, not aggressively going forward, but also not gonna come back that much, but try to provide the width for the team at the same time. Now it's even more clear as you can see, Baines really pushed outside, going down to really left. As you can see here, Andre Gomez comes down to receive the ball. Baines even tried to do an overlap here with him and post it right there. As you can see, this is even more clear now. While Gomez tried to receive the ball, Baines really doing overlapping because, like I mentioned again, the DM is already occupied so he only can have the choice of overlapping. So the next test we're gonna have is having Bernard coming on on the left and becoming like an inverted winger and see the difference between CDB and Baines on inverted wingback on support. Because we're having Sigerson as a winger on the right while Bernard as an inverted winger on the left, he's gonna cut inside. Let's see what's the difference. We're also going to turn on the overlap left. So we're going to look at here as the goal kick starts. The fullback is going to actually stretch out first to, to provide width first. But once you pass the ball to the midfield, let's see what happens to Bane's movement. He moves from outside left, coming inside to becoming a midfield, center midfield or DM again because I pushed the DM now up central midfield. So now the inverted wingbacks once again having the room to become a DM again. So we're going to pause it right there. Although Bernard is meant to be an inverted winger like a, he's actually gonna start on the out wide first before cutting inside so Bane still do not have the requirements to overlap or cover the width for him this is what gonna happen when you have an inverted winger and inverted wing back the inverted winger will provide the width unless the inverted winger come inside the inverted wing back will then try to cover overlapping we're gonna turn on the overlapping instructions now and see the dip as you can see here now CD base is actually already gone from the DM position out to become a normal wingbacks or you can say a tra more traditional wingbacks again out wide to try to do a lap with the overlap instructions. You can change the dynamic of the team really easily by having inverted wingback but also turn on the overlap instructions. I find the experiment really interesting because I wasn't really expecting this kind of things but I now know with inverted wingback you can actually create a really interesting tactics with him providing more passing options in the middle of DM but also at the same time providing the width and overlapping also overlap on the right hand side or the wing areas when you ask him to do overlap. Let's come into the last test which is 1DM and see what's gonna happen to the inverted wingback. Will they actually come here and become like a DM or will they try to stay out wide? Let's see what's gonna happen with them. Also gonna change the role of Bernard back to the winger and see what's the difference as well. I'm also gonna turn off the overlapping instructions to see will they actually try to stay inside more or go out wide more. So now we are in possession. Pause, pause right there. As you can see here, the wing inverted wing backs actually come inside again. Bane's coming inside, CDB also coming inside, while Schneider Lynch is slowly joining them. They're gonna form like a line around here if they are on defense while of course high up if they're on support. We're gonna go forward and see a little bit more of this highlight. As you can see here, Baines also stay in, CDB also stay in. As we see another example here with Baines also coming inside and also CDB. We having lots of numbers here in the middle, overloading the middle. So we can have more passing options in the middle like here creating a chances although we fail to score. but I think that's it for this video. Usually the, the perfect inverted wingback doesn't exist in this game. You usually need to train a DM becoming an inverted wingback for you. They usually have the perfect stats to become an inverted wingback because they also need to have some good passings. Also the stats, the decision making, pace, acceleration, stamina, work rate, the stats that you need to become a good inverted wingback. 
If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. And I guess I will see you again soon.